Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna from Cask and Quill and today I have a video for you which I meant to film <laughs> like a week or more ago but um you know life. It was meant to be at the time a kind of November at the moment video talking about different books, movies, and whatever that I had been enjoying during the month so far uh, at, at the moment. But instead, now that it's, you know, just a couple of days away from the very end of November, I'm kind of going to make this into sort of a hybrid at the moment and November favorites video because there's not uh, a lot of the month left anyway. I doubt that I'm going to discover new favorite things in the last two days. And if I do, you know, oh well, I guess maybe I'll make a video about those things later on or um, in December. I could tell you about them. But in any case, uh, so I have a little list of stuff I want to talk about here. So if you see me like staring at the ground, that's what I'm doing. Uh, referencing my notes. But anyway, so the favorite book that I read, uh, I read quite a few books in November compared to kind of the sad amount of books I'd been reading recently. But I think the favorite one that I had was reading Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow, which I had first heard about on Lauren at Lauren and the Books channel, and then subsequently had heard other people kind of talking about it. It's not, I haven't really seen it around on Instagram and that's like kind of the main place I hang out online, <laughs> but I, I just really haven't seen, I don't know if just the people that I follow don't um, really know about it or haven't read it or what the reason for that is, but I really enjoyed that book. She had kind of described it as being something that reminded her a lot of Harry Potter or like you know, gave her the same sort of like excited reading feeling as Harry Potter and I totally felt that same way where I'm actually really glad that I picked it up because up to that point I had just been really like struggling to finish books or even want to start them and I think a big piece of that is the fact that like I like can't read anymore without just passing out like falling asleep. I especially if it's nighttime. So like pretty much the only time I can get any reading done is during the day like on the weekend and even then I may end up falling asleep. I like to be cozied up when I'm reading so I'm sure that's a contributing factor but I always end up just kind of like doing that whole like thing where I'm like ended up reading the same page for like you know five or six different tries because I just end up so tired and feeling like I just need to go to bed or take a nap or I, you know, do something else because I'm just falling asleep. So if you have any tips for that that aren't drinking caffeine or... <laughs> I remember when I was in college, um, we had talked about that problem. Um, I was an English major so we did a ton of reading and that, you know, like most of us were like working full time probably and like going to school full time that were in my class. So that was like a common problem that people were like, I'm reading for school, reading so many books, but I'm always like unable to stay awake to like finish reading or finish my homework or whatever. They had suggested things like, you know, not even allowing yourself to like sit down when you're reading, like stand up, <laughs> put your book like on a counter and stand up and read that way. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's not like, I don't, you know, I don't have to read these books. So it's not like I need to go to those extremes. And that doesn't even like, that's not even fun to me, you know? So if you have any, like this is the longest tangent, whatever. Anyway, if you have any ideas for staying awake while you read, let me know what they are in the comments because I would like to try some of them. I know they say like you're not supposed to be cozy or like laying down or whatever or you're just gonna fall asleep. But I also don't like to be like sitting straight up and cold and like that just takes all the cozy fun part out of it. Anyway, we're gonna move on now <laughs> to the next subject which is um, movies and TV, I think. Yes. <laughs> Movies and TV. So I got really in 
into rewatching Planet Earth and some of the other similar one I think Frozen Planet I watched as well um, they're on Netflix if you're interested in checking them out if you've never watched those before stop whatever you're doing now and do it because they're just so good like I remember watching when I was a kid um, Nature which was on PBS uh, for those in America just like I think it was on Sunday nights and I remember watching that and just feeling like it was so much fun like watching you know like lions and all these other animals there I mean there were obviously more than just lions but that's I guess one of the ones a lot of the ones that like stand out to me are like animals in Africa like for whatever reason that's what I remember watching the most on nature but they are very much like that planet earth which is done by BBC and narrated by David Attenborough which I almost just like can't watch nature programs if they aren't narrated by him at this point because he's just the best at it and his voice is just it goes they just go together you know like it just makes sense somehow <laughs> anyway um so i got really into rewatching some of those i have not yet watched planet earth 2 i don't know why i think like i'm saving that as like a special treat for myself or something maybe i'll watch that this winter sometime Anyway, so that's the show that I've gotten really into. And what I've been watching lately for movies would be me just basically re-watching Harry Potter on repeat. It's just like this, this like whole time of year, like fall and winter, for me, I'm just like, what else are you going to do? You know, like you have to watch Harry Potter a thousand times because... I mean, what are what are your other options? Christmas movies? Obviously not. Um, I actually mostly was watching them. I haven't. I wanted to wait until after Thanksgiving in America here to like go down the Christmas music or movie path. Not because I have like a problem with anyone who, you know, decides to start celebrating or doing that stuff earlier. It's just that I personally like fall so much that I want to like enjoy it for as long as possible before I, you know, get really into like the Christmassy holiday spirit. So I hadn't wanted to really start watching any Christmas movies. Otherwise, I probably would have watched um, Muppets Christmas Carol like 85 times by now. But instead, I watched Harry Potter 85 times just straight through, like just on a loop. The nice thing about that is that there's so many films, there's eight of them, so like by the time you reach the end, like you're you're already ready to like start back at the beginning, you know? Like you there's no way to get sick of them. I think <laughs> because you just keep, you know, going through that cycle. So then that ended up with me also starting a reread of Chamber of Secrets, which I'm currently reading right now. And, you know, I, I won't include that as a favorite because it's just like, duh, that's a given, you know? Oh, um, I also saw The Crimes of Grindelwald. I don't really want to talk much about it on here right now because I'm sure there's still a lot of people that haven't seen it that would like to, um, and I don't want to, like, give anything away at all, but I will just say that I did enjoy it. The Fantastic Beasts movies and people and plot will just never be Harry Potter, but I don't really care. Like, it's still fun to kind of return to that world. And I think what's interesting about Fantastic Beasts is that it's a little bit more like, well, it's more adult. Like, it's dealing with mostly adult humans rather than child ones and that's just kind of like a different perspective and then I think you also see a lot more like everyday magic I guess or like how magic is used especially I think in the first Fantastic Beasts movie where you just like with Tina and Queenie at their little apartment kind of seeing like how they use magic in their everyday lives and we get like a little bit of that in some of the Harry Potter movies like times at the burrow or things like that but I just think that that's kind of fun to see those things rather than like extreme circumstances all the time or like in a classroom setting or whatever it's kind of fun to see how people actually 
you know, incorporate magic into their normal everyday lives. So that's that's part that I liked about about those movies in general, and I think that this one kind of carries through some of that. But yeah, so if you haven't seen the movie, I would suggest that you do. It's a little bit like different than the first one. I would say it's a lot darker, and that's maybe all I'll say about that. But just, I guess, be prepared for that. So continuing with other like entertainment stuff that I've been enjoying this month, I've been listening lately to the Fantastic Beasts soundtrack. S -s -s soundtrack because I was reading the screenplay for Crimes of Grindelwald over, when was that? I don't know, time just, what is it even? A uh, flat circle is what, but I had just sort of started playing that soundtrack in the background while reading the screenplay. I always kind of like to do stuff like that. Um, like I listen to the Harry Potter soundtracks when I'm reading Harry Potter. Uh, it's just like a little magical way to immerse yourself. But I continued like I, you know, the songs kind of gotten to my head and so I continued to listen to those even beyond reading the screenplay which just took me a few hours. And um, the other thing that I've been listening to a lot this November is Iron Maiden because I was and am excited about the fact that they are, are touring again this summer on their Legacy of the Beast tour that they've extended now to the US. And, excuse me, so um, I was excited to buy a ticket for that, which I now have done, and will be seeing them next summer. So obviously I've been, you know, Putting that on repeat, my favorite Iron Maiden album, for anyone who cares at all, is their first album, Iron Maiden. I just think it's so great, like, I just, I love it the most. It's the best. So there. One of my favorite products that I've used this month is, and I didn't like just get it or anything, but I've started using it a lot more this month, is um, this lip gloss chapstick, whatever, um, that I have on right now. It's from Pacifica, which is a cruelty-free brand, if you care about that, well, like I do. Um, it's also vegan, if you care about that. And this is what it looks like. Mine is kind of like all destroyed at the top, but that's what it looks like. Um, it's the Color Quench Lip Tint in the flavor Coconut Nectar. And, like, it doesn't put a lot of color onto your lips, but it's, like, sort of this, like, it looks way darker in there. Like, it's this brownish color. Sorry if that's all blurry. I can't tell. Um, but you get the idea. It's And it's actually kind of, like, glittery or shimmery I guess I would say uh, which usually isn't really my thing I don't love that a lot but in this I don't mind because it's almost like you know how like highlighter is that it's like so fine usually that it just looks like shimmery not like chunks of glitter I don't really like chunks of glitter but this is more just like shimmery I would say I have two other colors of it but this one I've been wearing pretty much non-stop because Winter is a very drying time for one's entire body, generally. But I've been wearing it on my lips. I had been wearing a lot of like um, liquid lipstick, but that's just really drying. So I only wear it, you know, occasionally now um, and wear this most of the time. I think it's like $5 for a tube of that, which if isn't really that bad, you know, like it's more than a thing of chapstick, but it's also colorful and nice. Um, this one is sort of the, what I thought, at least on me, is like the most sort of natural looking color. Um, the other two I have, one is sort of a berry color, but it doesn't like come out quite as dark as I would like. And the other one I have is sort of like a pinkish color, but that's a little bit too bright to look natural and I do still wear them sometimes but this one is definitely my favorite coconut nectar and each one has like a different fruit or whatever um, flavor 
as well as the color. So also like coconut's probably my favorite anyway. Unless we're talking about coconut flakes, in which case get that shit out of my face. I, if you enjoy this, the taste or smell or anything of coconut, but hate coconut flakes, will you please let me know? Because I feel like I'm the only person that's like loves coconut flavored stuff or like coconut milk, coconut oil, all of that. But like the actual texture of coconut flakes, I just cannot deal with. So if I had to pick a least favorite now and forever for every month, coconut flakes. On that note, we can just move right into my food favorites. Number one, this pumpkin bread that I've been making basically nonstop for the past week. Um, and yeah, I said the past week because that's how quickly I eat it. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it's just, just I, I just love pumpkin bread so much. It's like one of my favorite foods and especially, like I love pumpkin flavored stuff anytime. I'm not really into like, you know, people like, um, like pumpkin spice lattes or whatever. I'm not really into that sort of a thing. But pumpkin foods, I like a lot. Like earlier this month, or was it? Yeah, earlier this month I made pumpkin flan, which I love. Pumpkin bread is so good. I love pumpkin pie. Um, so, or pumpkin bars. I could go on, we'll be here all day. But uh, this pumpkin bread, if you are interested in the recipe, I will maybe link it in the box down below. Um, so you can check it out. It's not a recipe of mine, but it's one that I found online, um, which happens to be really tasty. The only real like alteration I've made to the recipe for the pumpkin bread is that um, I think it calls for like a teaspoon each of, I suppose it's what, clove, nutmeg, and cinnamon. And I have, you know, those things separate, but if you don't, what I've been doing is just using three teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice because it has all those things in it, plus allspice and ginger. And I don't know if that's really made an enormous difference, but I have liked that and it's just easier. And then if you don't have all of those spices, that's easy to just buy like one little container of pumpkin pie spice. So there you go. The other food related thing I've been enjoying lately is actually a beverage. Um, well, I, I should mention there's two different ones. So when I was more in the like fall, pre-Thanksgiving fall mood, I was enjoying mulled cider, spiced cider, whatever version of that you wanna make um, with bourbon in it, so good. And then once I moved beyond Thanksgiving, and I was ready to start accepting winter into my heart, I started having eggnog and bourbon instead. Actually, what I have is almond nog. It's not quite as good as eggnog, personally. I don't think so, at least. But it's still quite good. Yeah, just a little splash of bourbon in that. I tried it with the eggnog, like, heated up with the bourbon or the almond nog, uh, I just didn't love that as much. I thought it was gonna be a lot better than it was, but you know what, I'm just a cold, I'm a cold eggnog person. I'm a cold nog gal. Yep. So I think the only other thing that I wanted to talk about was my favorite clothing from the month. And I'm into tights. I've been getting back into tight mode. I don't, I think just this month. I, well, I guess actually I wore some in October, but I've just been really enjoying wearing tights with various things. I just, I, I have a pair that's like navy blue, which I wear every once in a while, but most of my clothes are black. So black tights is kind of my jam. I just like wearing that with like a dress with like a sweater usually or a scarf. And speaking of sweaters, sweaters. I actually haven't been wearing a ton of sweaters lately because I tend to get like almost too hot in them. So I usually end up saving sweaters for when it gets really fucking cold, which it will eventually here in Minnesota. Right now it's been like just kind of around freezing for the past 
week or two maybe and it, it will get a lot colder than that but for right now I'm just like I've I've just sort of transitioned into like long sleeve shirts but I am really excited about sweaters and there's been one sweater in particular that I've been wearing which is just kind of like a thicker weight longer open sweater I don't know if you'd call that a cardigan. Do cardigans have to have buttons? I don't know. This doesn't have buttons, but it does has, have pockets. And it's just like really nice to, like I usually end up bringing it along in my bag to work because it's nice because our office is often very cold. But the other thing is that I generally walk to work and um, it can be, you know, super cold and windy and I have like a nice winter jacket that I wear, but like, inside the jacket I get so overheated because I'm walking and it's like trapping all that heat in and then like if I'm wearing a sweater as well I'm just gonna be like dying by the time I get to work so I generally wear you know just like a tank top or a t-shirt if I'm gonna wear a sweater that day I wear something lighter while I'm walking and then maybe I'll put it over top, a sweater over top once I get to work or change in the bathroom or just wear a long sleeve shirt instead like I've mostly been doing. So that's just the story of my sweater shirt scenario. Hope you're interested in hearing about that. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all I had prepared to say today. So let me know what kind of things if you are, pick a different category too if you have other things you want to talk about. but. What are some of the favorite, you know, books, foods, items that you have enjoyed um, throughout November? And uh, let's talk about it in the comments. Thanks so much for being here and watching my videos. One thing I did want to mention, this is like a really stupid thing I thought of earlier today. So for those of you that are avid YouTube watchers, you may know about a phenomenon called vlogmas which is essentially um, where a person does like a vlog or like a video blog of their daily life for like every day leading up to Christmas in December and I had the thought earlier <laughs> today I was like should I do vlogmas? <laughs> No, I shouldn't do vlogmas. Like I have, I think, I don't even think I have like 24 videos at all, let alone like in a row, like every day. Um, and everyone who does it, I've, I've watched a few different people um, do vlogmas and everyone who does it is just always like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this next year. Like it just takes so much effort to like film your day, but then also like go back and edit the video every single day and like put that up every day. Um, and man, I don't, I don't think I'm ready for that, but I, it does look like it would be kind of fun, you know, to participate in. So, but it's like, it starts in two days and I'm just like, mm, this is maybe would have required a little bit more planning. Um, also my life is not interesting enough to watch for 24 days in a row. Maybe I'll start small by doing like a weekly vlog throughout Vlogmas. Like I know that's not you know, the official thing, but maybe that's how I can sort of ease into participating in the idea of it, but not like putting myself off the idea of YouTube for the rest of time um, and boring you all to death with my, me basically like walking to work <laughs> and eating the same thing for dinner every night and stuff like that. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. But if you're doing Vlogmas, would you please let me know because I'd love to check out your videos. And finally, this is now the official end of the video. So thank you again so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.